Hello, VNAB 2017. I'm Todd Priebus. I'm a product manager on the Google Cloud Platform team. I work on media and entertainment solutions. And specifically, I work on visual effects rendering. So uh, the, the, the course of my talk, or the topic of my talk, when I was putting this together, it's like, let's look at the future of visual effects. And I think there have been a lot of talks, and as Eric said, this is my third year in a row doing this, forecasting sort of what's happened, or what, what are we going to see? What's, what's the next evolution? But I, I really thought, like in the context of this, uh, this conversation in particular, or this talk, that we could look at the past, and we could look at really the history of visual effects, rendering, evolution on public cloud over the last five years to really uh, give us a strong sense of what actually has been done. Right? There's lots of talk, there are lots of um, people speculating on how, how cloud evolves, but I think it would just be a nice time to regroup and give ourselves a pat on the back for all the great work that's been done so far. So. I'm really just going to walk you through how I've seen the evolution of cloud over the last five years. Uh, and then later on this afternoon, or actually right after me, you'll hear from Kevin Bailey, who's like pretty much the foremost expert when it comes to visual effects on cloud. He's been doing it since before it was cool. Uh, and then tomorrow, you'll actually hear from Jeff Kember, a solutions architect here at Google, uh, who has significant experience as well and has been working with a lot of visual effects studios to help implement the next generation. So I, again, I just want to really take a step back and look at some of the great accomplishments to help give you some context and scope uh, of when we talk about what is next, you can actually refer to, oh yes, this has actually been accomplished um, and what, what's been done. So 2012, in my mind, is sort of when all of this actually started from a public cloud standpoint. So I think there have, over the years, have been lots of uh, discussions or uh, people positioning themselves as cloud, but maybe you have artists working remotely, or maybe you have a, uh, a private data center. But I think once uh, public cloud gets in, got involved is when things really changed at an epic scale, allowing uh, studios and really individuals even to, to deliver uh, content that's previously kind of out of their scope, given the limitations of, of local hardware. Uh, so 2012 is when I started working in uh, cloud and, and visual effects rendering. And I think a lot of this goes really goes back to two studios that's kind of started it all. Um, so in Boston, there are zero visual effects. And zero visual effects was founded by Sean Devereaux and Brian Drews. Um, Sean actually spent many formidable years in, if not this building, in the building on the other side of it uh, at Digital Domain. Um, and then when Sean actually left Digital Domain, worked at a bunch of other shops, uh, moved back home to Boston, started a family, and wanted to continue doing visual effects, but didn't have the, the capital resource, or really even the scope of necessarily knowing what his work was going to be over the next 6 to 12 months, to build out an expensive render farm. So at its core, Zero Visual Effects was really a cloud-first studio. They said, uh, we know we can do this great work. We have these talented artists. We can, we, can, we can make great content. But we can't do what we don't want to do is start investing a lot of money in infrastructure that we really can't manage. At that point, it was a team of really maybe three or four people with some freelancers coming in and out. Um, so building out data centers uh, just didn't really make any sense for them. Uh, so with that in mind, they wrote uh, really what I consider to be the first public cloud or cloud-native rendering solution, and that was Zinc. Um, and Zinc differed from typical off-site render farms in, in a lot of different ways. It, uh, it was fully integrated, so it plugged in directly into popular GCC applications like Maya and like Nuke. Um, and it was designed to make the whole process of cloud uh, as seamless as possible, to, to make it seem like, and this is the thing I think we're all shooting for, whether you're talking about remote workstations or rendering, but to make it seem like it's a data center, not X hundreds of miles away, but literally in your facility. So Zinc was really designed around that sort of idea to seamlessly integrate into your workflow to allow you to manage public cloud resources and scale and benefit from them, um, but in a way that felt like it was tied directly into your pipeline. So zero visual effects was the, the, the first internal customer, so to speak, um, to use Zinc. And then, um, for, very fortunately, shortly thereafter, we came uh, in contact with Kevin Bailey and Atomic Fiction. And, and Kevin um, you know, has an amazing story, which he'll be sharing with you um, right after me, and not to take too much of his thunder away. But I mean, this is a dude who worked for George Lucas when he was 18 out of, out of high school. I mean, pretty amazing. So working on big feature films. And, uh, and Kevin and his partner, Ryan Toto, started Atomic Fiction. Uh, I think a very similar uh, idea towards zero visual effects, and they want to focus on content creation and having great artists and being able to deliver great projects and not wanting to necessarily invest in all the infrastructure costs that are required to, to deliver that. 
from a rendering perspective. So um, between zero visual effects and atomic fiction, there was the first two users of Zinc. Um, and this, again, in my mind, was really the first cloud native uh, rendering solution out there. Um, and what we saw from this was uh, some pretty amazing successes. Uh, there were several feature films done on Zinc by both Zero Visual Effects and Atomic Fiction. I think most notably was the film Flight, and this was delivered in 2013 um, by Atomic Fiction. And it was really the first time a Hollywood film uh, in its entirety was done on cloud. So again, you're talking about a a very uh, nimble, highly talented studio uh, in atomic fiction that were able to deliver uh, you know, hundreds of shots as the scope of this feature film project grew over time. And they were working with the, Robert, Direc Robert Zemeckis, the great director. Um, and, and again, I hope Kevin doesn't use the story in the, in the next presentation, but he gave a great, gave a great story um, of when he, Kevin's literally sitting at Skywalker Sound with Robert Zemeckis. Uh, I think in the final audio edits, and Robert Zemeckis wanted some changes made, and Kevin literally opened up his laptop, was able to make the changes in Nuke, and send it off to cloud to Zinc, uh, and render all of that, and have it done, and have it approved by Robert Zemeckis as soon as he came out of the final sound mix. So again, the dynamic scalability of cloud, allowing really small, creative, super talented visual effects studios um, was, was really done uh, around this time. So, you know, what, what happens, what happens next? Cloud starts to take off, Zinc is offered as a commercial service. Um, certainly other studios start to look at cloud, uh, writing their own pipelines, doing rendering on cloud. People start to develop other solutions on cloud. And very quickly, I would say the cloud providers actually took notice of this and determined this is a, a really strong market and a market they wanted to get into. Um, so in 2014, there are actually some pretty significant uh, investments made by public cloud providers in the acquisition of cloud rendering services. So Zinc was acquired by Google Cloud Platform in 2014, uh, in the middle of the year. And Green Button, another cloud rendering service uh, based originally out of New Zealand, was acquired by Microsoft. So uh, all of a sudden, you have sort of this potentially this niche industry. Um, people are you know, initially somewhat critical, can, can you pull off cloud when doing complicated visual effects and animation work? Uh, and I think the answer very clearly is yes, given some of the, uh, the investments that were made by these uh, two of the of three big cloud providers. So very quickly, you have these two uh, companies snapped up, and you are now seeing these cloud providers offering these services uh, to their end users um, and putting not only their... Um, their money behind it, but their engineering resources. So, you know, in the case of Zinc, we are a very small company acquired by Google. Now, all of a sudden, we have the resources of Google Engineering. We have the, the scale of Google Cloud Platform. Uh, we have partnerships which allow us to expand on the type of software we support and licensing agreements we have. So, once you have these public cloud providers involved, I think the 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 the, the race to um, to capture this market uh, certainly uh, certainly picked up. So that was 2014. Um, and also, this is my first exposure to, to the big studios, so the more traditional visual effects and animation studios actually using cloud. And, and shortly, thereafter, shortly after uh, uh, Zinc joined uh, Google, I was introduced to Steve McPherson, the CTO of Framestore. And at that point, they've been using Google Cloud Platform themselves um, for, uh, for several months for rendering. So this is not necessarily the case of a small startup that is building a cloud-first pipeline from the ground up. But instead, it's a, a long-established studio with a lot of sensitive tier one content they're working on, with a lot of on-prem hardware and infrastructure. And they, too, are seeing the value of cloud in what it can deliver for burstability and for scalability and, and for cost savings. So obviously, a studio like Framestore has a significant on-premise infrastructure, right? They have big data center. They have a lot of machines in Soho. But nevertheless, there are still these times where they need to burst. So for, for Framestore, they looked at cloud, and it made a lot of sense for them uh, to keep their capacity where it is on on-prem, and then burst out, work, burst out to, uh, to cloud platform, in this case it happens to be Google, to, uh, to allow them to uh, gather additional capacity when rendering jobs. So as the quote here said, Google gives us breathing room during these peak periods, affording our artists more flexibility and opportunity for creative refinement. So really, the way I like to think of cloud, and I've, I've talked about this many times, is, is infinite scalability. So imagine you have to render 500 frames. Well, what you can do on cloud is spin up 500 VMs, assign a single frame to each VM, and get those frames back uh, as soon as possible. 
So there's no longer the waiting game. There's no longer having to queue, having to wait for capacity. And uh, not only from a cost savings perspective for being able to pay for machines on a per minute or per hour basis, when you think about running a visual effects animation studio, um, one of the, probably the highest uh, expense is your actual human capital cost, right? You're paying your artists. So you've got artists sitting there traditionally in, an, in, a, in a large studio with large but uh, limited on-prem resources. And when you can now say, all right, instead of having to wait overnight or having to wait three or four hours for this render to come back because it's queued behind several other jobs on the farm, um, there is no limit to capacity. You get those jobs back faster and you have artists turning around shots quicker and you're saving money on the, uh, on the artist side of things. So um, really big eye opener for me to see that it wasn't just the, the indie shops or the small boutique visual effects shops using cloud, but now we have people like Framestore. Um, 2015, I think, when, is when we really first started seeing the, the ISVs, the key content creation providers out there, um, start to um, support cloud with their solutions. And there are a few more I'll, I'll talk about. But Thinkbox Software is certainly one of the, uh, the very first to do that. They have a very popular queue management system called Deadline. It's in use by you know, probably 50, 60% of, of a lot of, of the major visual effects uh, animation studios out there. And uh, they went uh, all in with their cloud wizard. So they essentially built a deployment solution that would run on any of the public clouds, allowed lots of different configurations for users. But again, in my mind, this is kind of the, the first of the, the major ISVs to really go cloud native or look at offering their solution within the context of cloud. Content security was another major thing. And this is how I spent most of my 2015, um, although I was based up in San Francisco and am based up in San Francisco, spent a lot of time down, uh, down in Burbank meeting with the studios. So it's great once you can prove the use case for cloud to the visual effects animation studio saying, all right, we, we understand that this is highly scalable, this is cost effective, uh, we're saving our, our capital expenditures on our artists, uh, that's fine, but then at the same time, the studios awarding them the work have to make sure that they're comfortable with, with cloud. And uh, it's very interesting because there's no single point of um, acceptance when it, or, or compliance when it comes to cloud. And while the MPAA has laid forth a best practices set of guidelines for cloud, that doesn't actually, uh, adhering to those or self, self, uh, having a self-monitored audit to those or having an external third-party audit to those doesn't actually get you any of the clearance or approval from the studios um, for their content. So literally in the, in the case of uh, what we've been doing at Google, it has been a studio by studio relationship experience or exercise, I should say, with each of them, educating them uh, to the benefits of cloud, to the security of cloud, and to how it enhances their visual effects vendors' workflows in terms of turning around shots quicker, in terms of saving them money, and being able to be more creative. Um, so Adrian Graham addressed this in his content security uh, discussion earlier in the morning, but until you can get the approval of these studios or the okay, you really, no matter how great cloud is to the end user, to the visual effects vendors, um, it's limited because they can't put content on there without the approval of these studios. Um, so from a Google perspective, we've worked very, as I was saying, we've worked very closely with many of these. Um, uh, in particular, we uh, have a great relationship with Disney. We had a MPC, which did a bunch of work on Jungle Book, speak at our next conference uh, two weeks ago in San Francisco, talking about their use of Google Cloud Platform. So we, we, we've been working with these studios, as I'm sure have other cloud providers, to bring them online, to bring them up to speed, and to, to have them feel comfortable with cloud platforms for rendering so they can say, yes, for this next big tier one feature film blockbuster, you can actually use public cloud to put your content on. Um, another big thing, going back to the, the ISV partnerships, um, certainly when you look at the digital content creation space and, and the, the, the key tools, while there, while there are a number of them, when it comes to 3D modeling and animation, Maya is, is probably the most critical product. I can't think of a, a visual effects animation studio out there that doesn't use Maya in some form or another. Um, and it was a, another milestone um, within Google Cloud Platform to announce at NAB in August 2016 that we actually uh, formed a partnership with Autodesk to allow uh, their, their Maya product to run on Google Cloud Platform in a rendering environment. Um, so as we saw with, with Deadline in 2015 and their, their Cloud mm -hmm. Wizard and Autodesk within, with uh, their Maya offering on Cloud Platform, Google Cloud Platform through Zinc, 
um, more and more of these studios, uh, sorry, of these, of these ISVs, of these software developers, are seeing the work that's been done by people like Zero Visual Effects, like by Atomic Fiction, by Framestore. They're, they're aware of the work that the cloud providers are doing with the studios to enable content security and a best practices methodology for actually deploying your pipeline. So they too are now moving to modify both the development of their software as well as the licensing, which is really critical, um, which is typically limited to an on-prem deployment or deployment within a certain amount of miles of your physical facility. So they're reworking those terms now to allow deployment on cloud. Um, 2016, we had our first uh, visual effects Oscar um, in terms of Google Cloud Platform uh, when uh, MPC won the, uh, the Oscar for Jungle Book. Um, again, very cool, very much a milestone for us. Uh, uh, Hannes, um, the uh, head of core infrastructure at MPC, as I was mentioning, spoke at our Google Cloud Next Summit um, two weeks ago and, and really talked about how they were able to maintain a hybrid pipeline using all the on-prem resources at our MPC and then burst additionally to Google Cloud Platform for rendering. So um, for us, it was really exciting. We were really proud to be involved heavily in providing the infrastructure and the solution for uh, a major visual effects studio to deliver a major feature film for a major studio that ended up winning the Oscar for best visual effects. And then that brings us to 2017, and it's kind of, it's, it's all in now. Amazon just recently acquired Thinkbox Software, ma makers of the deadline queue management system. So now we have Azure with, with Green Button, and which has been renamed Microsoft Batch, uh, Google Cloud Platform with, with Zinc, and uh, now Amazon has, uh, has Thinkbox. So uh, as to what they're gonna be doing with that, um, not quite sure at this point, the acquisition is fairly recent, but I think it further goes to reinforce the fact that all of these cloud providers see the uh, industry and see visual effects, see rendering as really a critical part and a growing part of their ecosystem when it comes to offering compute and storage resources. So this has just grown, again, from studios like Zero Visual Effects and Atomic Fiction, which was you know, a handful of people when they started, all the way through now to where you have an Oscar-winning film being done on, uh, on, a, on a public cloud, and all three of the cloud providers out there uh, acquiring um, uh, significant solutions in the cloud rendering space. And I think, again, just kind of taking a, a step back and looking at the, the data, how the data sets have grown, you can see some of the films that have been done on cloud and how those have exponentially become more complex and grown. So flight, around 7 million core hours um, two, in 2012 when Atomic Fiction did that. They did the film The Walk for another film for Robert Zemeckis in 2015, 9.1 million core hours on Google Cloud Platform. And then you can see some of the, uh, the advanced stats from The Jungle Book, which was just finished uh, very recently on, on cloud as well, so up to 14,000 cores, 11,000 nodes, 360,000 wall clock hours, and a million and a half tax process. So exponentially, this is going to continue to grow and grow and grow, and you'll be hearing from Kevin Bailey next uh, as to how he runs a visual effects studio with their own cloud rendering solution now, Conductor, on cloud, and what he sees as the future of visual effects. So anybody have any questions? Okay, then. Thank you.